Okay, uh, instead of doing the rocks one after another uh, for the sedimentary rocks, I'm going to break them up into their two types. The clastic, a.k.a. detrital, uh, sedimentary rocks. I like saying clastic. And then uh, up here off the screen, I'll also do a video of the, uh, the chemical sedimentary rocks, which honestly, I think should be their own rock type. But anyway, um... So here I have the clastic sedimentary rocks. Think about what that, that means again. Hopefully you've already watched my lecture video, if you've seen my lecture video, or you've seen me lecture on it, whatever the situation may be. Uh, I have them arranged from grain sizes from the smallest to the largest. And you can see those are some big grains, sand, or, uh, grains on, uh, on this conglomerate. So I have a shale, a siltstone, a sandstone, and a conglomerate. So with the... Grains of the shale, uh, if we were to break this up, you'd see that they're tiny, 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 and it's made out of clay, which basically you cannot see with your naked eye. Then we have a siltstone. Siltstone is a lot like sandstone. The easiest way to tell the difference between a siltstone and a sandstone is with a sandstone, you should be able to see the individual grains. With a siltstone, you can't quite see the individual grains that are in there. It looks like you almost could, but not quite. And it certainly doesn't look like a shale over here, which forms in these layers. It's definitely more more blocky, and usually it feels a little, a little smoother. The really easy way to tell the difference between a, a shale and a siltstone if you're a geologist, and I don't expect you to do this, but if you're a good geologist, you'll do this, uh, is you kind of take a bite out of them. A, uh, a siltstone will feel gritty between your teeth. A shale will not, because those clay uh, grains that make up the shale are very laminar and very flat and very tiny, and you just don't feel the grit. <clears throat> so that's kind of the, the siltstone. And again, coming back to the shale, uh, it will form in these layers you can kind of see these layers and it's breaking apart that's why i have the two cards there to try and catch some of that you see that and really 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 tiny grains of sand definitely a rock that's sort of falling apart this one these edges here uh they may have been fractures it almost looks like it was cut that way eh, probably not probably just fractures it broke off that way but uh yeah a lot of times it will form really uh it'll be very dark in color be black like this uh, a lot of the color you're seeing here, kind of these yellows, that's oxidation. So you remember from chemical weathering, right? In chapter, uh, what is that? Chapter five? Yeah, chapter five. Uh, we talk about oxidation as a form of chemical weathering. Well, there it is. You can see it. If this chemical weathering wasn't here, this rock would be pretty black. Almost all black, kind of like it is here. So that's shale. And like I said, I kind of just showed you the siltstone. The sandstone, we can see the grains with our naked eye. If I rub this piece of sandstone from the from Blake, uh, I got this from Lincoln Lake. It's the Weddington sandstone member in the uh, Atoka Formation, right? And of course, I've got the least weathered piece ever here. Normally, you can rub this, and the sand just falls off in your hand. But you can see the individual grains of sand with your your naked naked eye. And I'll get the microscope up here. And I mean the name fits, right? It's a sandstone should look like a block of sand. So I can see those little individual grains of quartz in this sandstone. And then, moving on up in size, uh, we have the conglomerate, which is basically anything above two millimeters. Write that down, two millimeters. I'll test you on that. The rest of these you can tell because, oh, I can bite these and tell the difference. Uh, and then these two, you can see, actually see the grains, and we start calling it a sandstone. And there's there's definitely a, a, a spectrum here, right? There, you know... 
some geologists may argue, oh, something's a sandstone, oh, something's a siltstone, because there will be things that exist between these two where it's just a very, very, very small sand, and some people will call it a siltstone, some people will call it a sandstone. Um, usually you, you angle towards sandstone, though, but uh, even a lot of the rocks around here uh, in the southern part of northwest Arkansas towards Fayetteville, you'll see these huge beds of, uh, of sandstones. But they can be really silty. They, they're really hard to actually see. That's why I go out to Lincoln Lake. I get this one in particular because it's a very a nice coarse sandstone. Not two millimeter sandstone, but still. Uh, you can see the sand. So the conglomerate, anything above two millimeters. So I see grains in here that are really large, right? They're almost the size of my fingernail. Some are actually bigger than my fingernail. And these grains are rounded. Which is what makes it a conglomerate. There's something similar to a conglomerate where the grains aren't rounded. If they are angular and sharp, we call it a breccia. And for this video, I'm not showing that that breccia. I'm just showing the the conglomerate for the class I'm currently teaching. We're not I'm not including breccia. In the future, I might and maybe I'll make some more videos. But so that is a conglomerate. So those are kind of the the basic uh, clastic sedimentary rocks. There are some other ones that are kind of uh, in between and then you can have different uh types of or different ranges of sorting right so this is poorly sorted there's all different sizes of grains in this conglomerate this is very well sorted everything's that same grain size same thing with this siltstone everything's the same size the rounding in this sandstone should be really good uh so anyway you could you could have a sandstone that's more arcosic uh, which means it actually has feldspars included in it. It's not just quartz sand like this is. Uh, it'll be kind of kind of pinkish usually. So sometimes we include those in our samples. So these aren't the only four that exist. There are other ones. Uh, but these are kind of the main four size, the, the four clastic sedimentary rocks that show you the, the grain sizes from clay to silt to sand to gravel. And that's all.